lesson, we'll view the results tab of our web form, where we can view user submissions, get a basic analysis of our submitted data, view a table of results, download as delimited text or Excel file our results, or clear all results as you might need to do as you're testing out your form in the beginning. Let's get started. On our web form, let's click the results tab. The first thing that we can see is an overview of user submissions. We see the number of results, how many total, a date stamp of when it was submitted, the username and if it's anonymous or not, the IP address, and we can view, edit, or delete these submissions. If I click view on the first one, now I get a little bit more information about the submission. I get the values that they entered for each field. So in this case, the form is called RSVP. It was submitted by anonymous. Here's the date stamp and the IP address. Now for the names field, the value entered was testing. The response was happily planning to attend and the number attending, which is two. Now over here, I get a navigation where I can go to the next submission or previous one in this case, since that was the, the latest one. So using the previous and next submission links here, I can navigate through all of my submissions and see all of my results. Now using these breadcrumbs here, I'll go back to web form results. Next, we can get a basic analysis of our data. If I click on the analysis tab here, I get an overview. So for the names field, it, it lets me know how many left it blank. Zero names were left blank, which is good since it was a mandatory field. That's what we would expect. We had seven responses and seven responses entered a value. The average submission length in words was 1.86. So that may or may not be interesting or useful to you. For the response field, six were happily planning to attend and one response said they were not able to make it. And the number attending, this is very useful because it gives me a sum of all of the numbers entered into that field. So now the fact that I used a number field for number attending is paying off because now I get some math where it's going to sum the total of all of, all of the numbers entered in to the number attending field and it gives me a total. So that's very useful. We can click on the more stats. There's a few more statistics that you may find useful, especially in the case of a survey or or something like that. So not something that I need to use, but it's there if you need it. Next, let's go to the table tab. And this table tab is distinguished from the submissions tab in that this is showing an overview of the fields themselves. So while the submissions tab shows the time of the submission and the user and the IP address, the table actually shows that same information, but it also gives the values of my first three fields. So this is a little bit more useful. If you had a form with a lot of fields, this table might get a little unruly, I imagine. Next, we can go to the download tab and we can choose to download our results as delimited text and we can choose a delimited text format, comma, tab, semicolon, etc. Or we can download it as an Excel file. So I'll go ahead and choose delimited text and I'll keep the tab format. So this additional formatting is available to you if it's appropriate. I'm going to keep the defaults as select keys are full human readable options instead of the raw options. So for my radio buttons, I've got my key values as yes and no and my labels as happily planning it to attend or re regretfully not able to make it. So I could choose either one of those if I want the long label or if I want the, the short key. So I'll choose, actually I'll choose the, the full human readable values and I'll keep this default as separate um, options for each one instead of a compact list, that will be fine. And now expanding the included export components. So since all of my submissions are anonymous users, 
it's not really useful f to me to include the submission information. It's kind of irrelevant because they're entering in their name already into the field, so I don't need that data. So I'm going to exclude the submission information, and I'm just going to include the name, response, and the number attending. So this is going to simplify my download a little bit. In the download range options, I'm going to download all. But let's say you already had downloaded this and you wanted to do it again. You could say only new submissions since your last download. Since I haven't downloaded it yet, it's not giving me that option. Or you could say only the latest 10 or 5 or 100 or whatever it is. If you have a large number of submissions, this could be really useful so you're not continuously downloading this massive file. And there's this last range option of all submissions starting from and you can use the submission ID. So if you know your last submission ID was 597, then you could say, I want to start at 598. And you could set an upper limit as well if you wanted to. So those are your download range options. I'm going to say all submissions. I'm just going to include the name, response, and number attending. I'm going to keep this list as separate. I'm going to use the full readable human readable options, the values as opposed to the key, and I'm going to choose an export format of delimited text with tab delimited. I'll go ahead and download that and save, and let's take a look at that file. So I've just opened up my downloaded file. I've got a tab delimited text file of my names, response, and number attending fields, and I could import this into another program if I wanted and use and analyze that data further. All right, returning to our results tab, the final option is the clear option. Now, if it was the case that you had a bunch of test data, it's really handy instead of having to delete those submissions one by one, which we could do here, delete, 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 that might get a little bit tedious, as I know that these are all test submissions and none of them need to be saved. I'm going to go ahead and click on clear and noting that this action cannot be undone, I'm going to clear all results. So now in my submissions, everything is deleted and I can proceed with my testing. So something to be careful of if you're using live data, you probably don't want to clear all of your data until you run a backup or maybe never at all because that delete all function cannot be undone. In this lesson, we explored the results tab of our web form where we could view user submissions and navigate through them, get a basic analysis of our data, view the results as a table, or download the results as a delimited text or Excel file. Finally, we learned how to clear all results.